Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Chris and we're gonna give you a glimpse inside how to change the sound in your shop or wherever you might be for that matter. For the last couple years, I've listened to music through this. This is a wired sound bar that I picked up at a garage sale for about 10 bucks, but all that's gonna change with this. This right here is a Bluetooth wireless speaker. It is fantastic. It's from Ikea. You can pick one up at your local Ikea or at you know their website. Also, we've made a kind of a steampunk kind of suitcase Thing for it but also it's gonna be part of the French cleat wall as well so if you want to see how it all came together stick around like I said before thanks for joining me for this one we're gonna use this speaker to make all the reference marks to build this enclosure I'm using 3 8 of an inch thick Baltic birch plywood if you're not familiar with Baltic birch definitely go check it out at your local lumber dealer or big box store I'm sure they have some available for you there after cutting these strips to width on the table saw, I take them to the crosscut sled and cut them to length. Again, I'm using this speaker as a reference, simply taking measurements as I go and trimming the pieces to size as needed. I always like to hand sand most of these pieces before assembly. That way they have a nice feel and they're free of any splinters and whatnot. And once that's completed, I go ahead and take some glue and brads and assemble this box as you see here. After the frame is complete, I'm gonna go ahead and reference this down onto the back of the piece, making some marks here and trimming them down on the table saw sled. At this point, I take a paper template and I mount it to the back of the speaker. It's got some acoustic relief holes and a power strip I have to contend with, so this is the most accurate way I can find to transfer these marks to the back of the wood. Now I'm using a drill press and a Forstner bit to relieve this material. However, you can use a standard drill and a jigsaw. I typically don't like using a jigsaw, so I'm just using these relief holes. They're a little crude looking, but they're at the back of the piece, so I figured I would just go with it. Now, after some hand sanding, it's time to attach it to the back of the frame. Once the back piece is completely sanded and free of splinters, I attach it to the back of the frame with some glue and brads. Once everything's complete, I'm taking some 220 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure all edges are sanded flush. And then I'm gonna put a slight hand chamfer around the whole piece, giving it a nice feel as well. It's at this point I make my way to the bandsaw and I'm cutting out some 90 degree corners here. These corners are gonna be mounted at each of the four corners to hold the speaker in place. Taking them to the disc sander, I'm gonna go ahead and put a slight chamfer on each one Keeping them nice and sanded, we're going to put these aside for later. You're going to see how these are getting installed just in a minute. After cutting four small blocks, these are going to be installed as feet on the unit. I've made these marks just by eye and I've gone to the disc sander and I'm going to go ahead and put a slight taper on each of these pieces. As you can see here, it gives kind of a cool effect. Now it's time to bring them over to the base of the piece and install them as four little feet on the bottom just with some CA glue and activator. Now we're gonna put a coat of black spray paint, not only on the four corner pieces, but the entire unit itself. This is just flat, standard Rust-Oleum black spray paint I got from my big box store. We're gonna go ahead and make a couple coats of it here. Once it dries, put another coat on. And then I have this nice kind of rustic pipe, steampunk looking drawer pull that I'm gonna use as a handle for the top. After the spray paint has fully cured, it's time to put on a nice clear coat of matte varnish. And yes, I am painting the handle because I like how it looks. With the lacquer drying, it's time to now make my way to the crosscut sled and cut some pieces that are gonna be used to hold it up on the French cleat wall. If you're not familiar with what a French cleat system is, I've made plenty of videos on it. I'm gonna link those down below. So when you finish watching this, check those out as well. Hey guys, I want to bring you in here real quick to thank a couple of companies. The first one being Ergodyne Work Gear. As you can see, I look pretty ridiculous wearing all three pairs of these safety glasses, but I want to show you something really neat. I've never seen safety glasses have this feature. So here they are. They're comfortable. They're great. They're hard. It's a good pair, all right? But every pair can be outfitted with something like this. If you can see here, look at that. That is a comfort, I guess, foam insert that would fit right on the inside of each pair and actually what it does is, not only is it comfortable to wear, but it also prevents extra dust from getting in the cracks around your face. Fantastic idea. I definitely recommend you guys check them out. I'm gonna link them down below as well. And of course, 
Pony Jorgensen. I've used these clamps around the shop extensively now, and I can say they are absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna link them down below as well. And you can also find their new and invigorated line at most of your big box stores. That being said, let's get back to the project. Now that we've got the piece clamped up, I'm going to countersink some holes and then come back and screw it in place for a more permanent solution. Well, it's a good thing I still had some of this General Finishes pitch black stain. I forgot that I spray painted this piece beforehand and it's a good thing that black is black and it looked like it blended in seamlessly. Now to install the corner pieces that are gonna hold the speaker in place. I'm just using a couple of dabs of CA glue. If I ever need to take this piece out, which I don't envision me doing, I can just pop these pieces out and the speaker will come right out. Now it's time to be out with the old and in with the new. Check this out, it sounds pretty good. And that's this project complete. As you can see, it can stay with you in the shop or you can take it wherever you like. Simply plug it in and you have music wherever you want. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us for this project. This is gonna be something we're gonna use in and out of the shop quite a bit. All you gotta do, run a quick extension cord and you're good to go. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for this one. This is gonna be one of those videos where it's gonna be quick and simple and I hope you got something out of it. And also, I've got links here to subscribe and watch more videos over there. Thank you so much for joining us. I think he's ready to go. Yeah, are you ready to go? He's adorable. <laughs> Guys, thanks again. We'll see you on the next video. All right, let's go. Whoa. Ooh, wow.